So let's cover our first common issue here, dealing with missing values prior to our analysis. Uh, it's very common that in a marketing survey, there'll be I don't know style answers, no preference, does not apply. And often those values will be coded as say negative 999, negative 99, or something else, but that is typical. Big idea here is they are the kinds of answers to survey questions that are outside of the response scale and we need to exclude them often before we conduct our analysis. So let's see how this can be a problem and how we can avoid uh, making it a problem for us. Look at one of the set of survey questions we have in our craft beer data set where we ask people whether they'd be more likely or less likely to drink a craft beer versus an alcoholic beverage um, at various locations. Uh, importantly, the answers to these questions were coded from negative two to positive two. Ne positive two meaning they're very likely to drink a craft beer and negative two meaning they're much uh, more likely to drink some other alcoholic beverage. Now, maybe we want to take an average score for these questions, for, for example, these situations on the beach. But before we use a simple average function in Excel to score this, we have a challenge. We have a I wouldn't drink or this situation doesn't apply to me option also on the survey. Now this is clearly outside of the five point range. It's an entirely different style of answer. This would be coded uh, in our data set as negative 999. Now what happens if we ignore this problem and simply try to take the average? Now if we, took an, if we took the Excel function average in our data set and our answer would be negative 77.6 to this preference for uh, craft beer or other alcoholic beer on the beach. An answer of an average of negative 77.6 makes absolutely no sense. If the only answer response options are between negative two and positive two, by rule, the average would have to be between negative two and positive two. So what's going on here? Um, spoiler alert, it's because we kept the negative 999 values in there when we took the average, right? So by keeping those values in, uh, the average means nothing. And also more generally, like we know that those values are simply not part of the preference. These are people who literally don't have an answer to this question. So let's fix this problem. One solution is that we simply calculate the average, but we ignore the negative 999 values. Uh, we can do this in a multi-step process. We know that the average is just the sum of all the values that we're interested in taking the average of divided by the count of all those values. So we can use a few Excel functions to calculate the correct average for us while ignoring negative 999 values. So we're going to illustrate this in Excel in a moment here, but let's look at how this is going to work. The functions are shown below here. First, we see the average function as normal, selecting column AH, where they, that, and we see that on the far right side here, if we actually used this function, we would get negative 77.6. Um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to build up to the correct average. We're going to first use a count if function. The count if function down here is going to count all the records, all of the 230 records, only if an individual selected an answer that was greater than negative three. And that results in 212 answers of the 230. Now, why does this work? Remember, the only valid answers on this, from our perspective, for this analysis is a negative two to positive two. We don't want to include the negative 999, so that'll only count it up if it's greater than negative three. Similarly, we will use a sum if function. So this will sum up all the values, but again, only it only sum them up if that value was greater than negative three. Now that we have the sum and the count, we simply take the sum, divide it by the count, and we derive our average. Okay, so let's actually see this in play in Excel. So I'm in my craft beer data set, and since I'm taking the average, I need to have real numerical values, not the labels. So I'm in the values version of the data set. And we're just going to illustrate this on column AH, which happens to be at the very end, so situations at the beach. So here in column AI, let's do the wrong average. I'll call it average wrong just to show that it's not going to work the way we want it to. And if I take the average of all of the values in Situation Beach and run it. We get a negative score here. I'm going to expand the decimal showing a little bit. And we see that the average is negative 77.6. That's no good. 
Let's make another spot here where we can do, call it average right. This is not exactly the best labeling, but useful for a classroom example. And I'm gonna mark this here so we can clear it, see it, clearly see it. I'll call this the count if. This is the sum if and correct average. Now I'm doing this in multiple steps, so it's a little easier to see on the video. Um, you could actually do this all in one cell if you know how to merge the different functions together. So for the count if, we'll do equals count. And then when you start looking at count, you see there's a bunch of different function. We're using the count if function. So it says first select your range. And again, it's the same range that we've been working with, 230 responses. And notice here I could start completing the function up here if I wanted. I selected this uh, up here in the formula bar. I put a comma in and it says, what's your criteria? This is where you type in the rules, like only count it if, and I already using quote marks to specify the thing. I say, well, only count if it's greater than negative three. Close it and run it. And there we go. Sure enough, it's counting 212. So there must be 18 people in total who answered negative 999. For the sum if, I can do the same thing. Sum if function select the range. You could type the range in correctly as well. There's a bunch of different ways to do this. Sum if, and then what's my criteria? Same exact criteria. Again, you use quote marks. Um, that's just the rules, how the function is. It has to be greater than negative three to summate all these values. And we get our sum there. And then for the corrected average, you could simply do take the sum and divide it by the count. And there's our average. And that's a whole bunch of decimal points. We wouldn't want to include that many decimal points in our reporting. One or two is appropriate. And there we go. Uh, I do note also in the video that uh, as a little footnote, you could simply just use an average if function that totally exists, and that would be fine. Um, the reason I happen to like this example here is that by using the count if function, we actually have a way to easily calculate the total percentage of people who answered this question, which is also a relevant piece of information that we care about. If we were then reporting on these results, we would simply say uh, among the 212 survey respondents of 92.2% in total who, expect, who expressed a preference about selecting craft beer at the beach, the mean score was 0.64 out of a possible range of negative two to positive two. This can be interpreted that, on average, respondents expressed a modest increase in craft beer preference over other alcoholic beverages when at the beach. Notice how I report both what the average is interpreted as on the original scale, and by virtue of taking the count, I was able to calculate the percentage of people who did respond in total. That's actually helpful here, right? It's useful for the marketer to know both what the average preference was for people who gave an answer. Also, we want to know that most people did have a preference about craft beer versus other alcoholic beverages um, on this question. Only 7.8% of people said that this did not apply to them. So what did we learn here in this first lesson? We learned that we have to be cautious about reporting summary statistics when we have a missing answer or a I don't know, doesn't apply style answer somewhere on the survey. We learned that one, we learned one technique in Excel to address this issue without deleting or editing the original data. And we also learned that when we report the results for this type of analysis, we need to be clear that we have excluded some people from the analysis.